Here's our tale to take for this. The main event of the evening. The middleweight championship of the world is on the line. Both men 31 years old. Pereira three inches taller and has a three and a half reach advantage. We're talking about experience. The experience edge goes to Simon Marcus. And you got to look at the knockout percentage ratio. Advantage going to Alex Pereira. And you're looking at probably the hardest puncher in the division against the hardest kicker in the division. Here are the fight metrics for this battle. Pereira has only been dropped once. As for Simon Marcus, he's been down more than he's knocked his opponents down, but he always gets back and most times gets the win. Here are the championship rules for tonight. Five rounds, three minutes each. Punches, kicks, and knees are legal. Three knockdowns in a round or four in the fight, and it results in a TKO. And this championship bout is going to be judged using the following scoring criteria. We're starting with knockdowns, followed by cumulative damage inflicted, followed by number of clean scoring strikes, but with an emphasis on spectacular techniques over normal techniques. Finally, if there's no clear advantage, judges are looking for aggression. Open scoring, five judges score the fight. It's a 10 point must, seize, must system. You will see the scores after each and every round and they are the official judges scores. Now let's take a look at my keys to glory for this belt and for the champ. It's got to control the center of the ring and he's got to attack on angles. He can't sit there and let Simon establish his kicks, especially his left kick and his right low kicks. And it's going to be, have to be with his boxing where the Simon Marcus wants to use his Muay Thai base. He's got Good kicks on the outside, knees on the inside. He's got to stay off the ropes. He's got to showcase that improved boxing he's talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event is a rematch from Guangzhou, China, in which a judge's decision decided the exchange of the belt between these two men tonight. Both champion and challenger vowed to end it all inside the glory ropes. This bout sanctioned by the ISKA in cooperation with the Illinois State Athletic Commission. And at the bell, your referee is Dave Smith. From Chicagoland to the Netherland, glory kickboxing fans are watching in over 180 countries around the world. It's time for glory! Let's meet the challenger. He is a kickboxing and Muay Thai world champion and a two-time North American Fighter of the Year. As a professional, his record stands at 48 wins, four losses, two draws, and 27 career knockouts. He stands six feet, one inch tall, 1.85 meters, and he weighed in at 184.5 pounds, 83.7 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Toronto, Canada, he is the two-time former middleweight champion of the world. He is the one, Simon Marquez. His opponent comes to Chicago to make his third defense of the glory belt. His professional record, 28 wins, six losses, and 18 career knockouts. He stands six feet, four inches tall, 1.94 meters, and he weighed in a fight time at an even 187 pounds, 84.8 kilos. He's here tonight out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and is the reigning and defending glory middleweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Alex. Poetan Parera! Once again, your referee for this championship bout is Dave Smith. Step up. All right, step up. All right, gentlemen, world title on the line. Give it your best. You know the rules. We went over in the back. Good, clean, fair fight, start to finish. Touch him up. Step back, good luck to you both. Simon Marcus looking to become the first ever three-time world champion in glory history. Alex Pereira looking to defend for the third time and establish himself as perhaps the greatest middleweight to ever do it in glory. Poetan, the champion, wearing the white gloves. Simon Marcus, the challenger, will be wearing the black.
Simon Marcus, after losing his title, has won back-to-back -back fights, a knockout in the first round over Zach Wells, and then a decision, a split win over Jason Wilness back in August. Quick turnaround for him, but he loves to fight and is getting another big opportunity here tonight. Scheduled for five rounds in Chicago. What are you looking for here in the first round, Joe, that will kind of tell the tale of where we're headed in this fight? Well, I think we're going to be patient here, and I think that's where Pereira's been doing a good job at pacing himself for that five round where I think the same thing's going to come from Simon. He's going to try to find his low kicks, his left body kick, and probably a nice solid jab to try to keep Pereira at bay. What do you think of this quick turnaround for Simon Marcus, who just fought August 10th? Well, maybe he's got a good camp. He had a, a good, solid win against Jason Wilness, and right from there, he spent a few weeks in Thailand, so he really hasn't had any breaks. Let's see if he fades late in this fight. And there, him and his camp, we're talking about improving his boxing. That seemed to be the issue in the first fight, so let's see what adjustments they have made. Pereira may be the best boxer in all of glory. But he's getting better with his feet and especially with his knees. And it's, and it's his confidence, too, and his ability to fight for five rounds and pace himself has just been really incredible. And he's so heavy-handed. That's why they call him hands of stone. He was 25-4 and four as an amateur, Joe, in kickboxing. 25 knockouts. Yeah, and he's got professional boxing experience as well. He's got good knees when he mixes with his boxing, and we saw that in his first title defense against Belgari. Belgari is such a tall fighter. Pereira was able to find a, a knee that cut Belgari and got him the win. And as I mentioned in the first fight, Simon found some really good low kicks until he broke his foot. Simon got caught with a left hook right on the ear. He needs to stay off the ropes. He can't just sit there and, and try to get you know, Pereira's momentum going. Pereira found the left hook. Conventional wisdom says Pereira can win with his hands, and Marcus can win with his kicks. Is it as simple as that? Well, I don't think so, because I know they're both prepared for that. So they're really tight on those ranges. Simon throws that overhand right a lot, and you just see Pereira just move his shoulder out of the line to avoid that overhand right. Don't hold. Good opening round here Work for out. the champ, Pereira. <laughs> Simon Ray, Marcus with Ray. so much experience, Ray. Joe. Look at me. 54 Don't professional hold. fights. He's traveled the world, won multiple championships all around the globe. Simon, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Work out. Work out, guys. Work out. <laughs> Ten seconds. Let him go. Right. 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 One of the adjustments Simon had to make with Glory was not being able to use his clinch, and in his Muay Thai bouts, his clinch and elbows were just made him so dominant. So that's where he's learning how to fight in this close range with his boxing. Alex Pereira didn't start fighting until he was 21 years old, 10 years ago. He's learned a lot in a short amount of time and has become the best middleweight in the world today. Good patient start from Pereira. Not getting too excited, staying calm. Simon's throwing some big punches, but Pereira's just doing a good job at slipping off. John O'Regan, one of our great glory riders, put out an article this week on Alex Pereira about how he dropped out of school at the age of 12 to work at a tire shop and started drinking with the adults hanging around. And by the time he was 16, said he was drinking about a liter a day of rum with beers mixed in as well. Said he was a full-blown alcoholic. That was just his lifestyle for a while. When he got into kickboxing, he won his first fight, quit cold turkey. Said it was terrible. It was a horrible experience for a few weeks, but hasn't had a sip of alcohol since. Now he's a role model, and he's really pushing to show the young Brazilian kids what you know hard work and dedication can accomplish. We asked him how he'd celebrate tonight if he won. He said, I'll probably have a Coca-Cola. Stop, stop. Here are the judges' scores. All five give it to the champ, Joe, 10-9. Yep, he's doing a good job of just staying calm. Staying relaxed, staying just out of range of Simon's kicks. He knows how dangerous they are. But this is where Simon needs to find that right low kick again. We know Pereira's expecting the left. Don't hold him. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. 
this is where Simon's low kicks need to go. As Pereira shrugs off that overhand right, he exposes the lead leg. Pereira looks so much bigger in there tonight, doesn't he? Yeah, Simon doesn't cut weight. He's really lean and he stays just a few pounds off of weight. Where Pereira had a big cut. I believe that 24 hours out, he showed me the scale and he was almost like 206 pounds. There's Howard Wright in the bottom of your screen in the corner of Simon Marcus. Joe, what kind of coach is Howard Wright? Well, he's been really good for Simon's career. Simon came from a, a really traditional Muay Thai background, so Howard's done a good job at mixing his boxing and his kicks and you know, establishing the glory style. Pereira's team on the other side. He fights out of the Peso Pasado team, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And it was really cool seeing their training. They, they implement a lot of capoeira, different style kicks. You saw Pereira even moving like a jaguar in the field. Some unorthodox training, which is super cool to see. That's his favorite animal, Brazilian jaguar. Nice combination finish knee from Pereira. Yeah, Simon Marcus not doing a lot with strikes. He's trying to do, do some damage with knees on the inside. Now he's trying to push in because he doesn't want to stay long because Pereira could mix his jab, stay long with his boxing just like nice that. right so hand. Simon wants to close, close range and try to mix knees in the clinch. And Simon Marcus with a left hook. And Simon needs to be careful walking forward like that. Pereira's got some good uppercuts as well. Marcus has only landed 10 punches. Pereira circling to his left to avoid the power of Simon's left kick. Look how fresh Pereira looks right now. And he almost found a right hand as Simon was kicking. Not the start Simon Marcus was looking for. Good job. Way to work. So Pereira went into the wrong corner for a minute there. He'll head back to the right one. Glory 59 Amsterdam, two weeks away, ladies and gentlemen. The card of the year, Rico versus Guto, Van Roosmalen versus Petsch Panamarung. It'll take place in the Johan Cruyff Arena. In fact, all the seats we put on sale have sold out. They're adding extra floor seats just for this fight. If you're over in Europe, you can get some right now. Tickets.glorykickboxing.com. There's Alyssa. One of our beautiful glory girls as we get set for round three. And yeah, some good success in round two. We saw Simon with a looping punch at the end that seemed to rock Pereira as he went into the wrong corner. But Pereira seems to do well when he's putting his, his punches and punches. He's using his one-two hook, one-two uppercut. But when he puts his punches together, that's how he seems to be scoring. Ready? Bucks! Just joining us, it's Alex Pereira, the middleweight champion, wearing the white gloves. Simon Marcus in the black. This is a rematch of last year in China when Pereira beat Marcus for the title. There's punches and knees combinations from Pereira, what he's known for. There's a kick from Simon. Is this the kind of fight you expected from the one? Well, he has to get inside with Pereira. I would have still would like to see a few more right low kicks from Simon. But I know Simon's really good in the clinch, so I feel he can really soften up Pereira's body in there. According to the judging in round two, three gave it to the champ, two to the challenger. Therefore, two judges have it even. Three have it two rounds to one for Pereira. Nice right body kick from Simon. Pereira continuing to control the ring. Simon seems to be getting a little bit more comfortable now. Let go. Arms free. Let him go. Let that body go. Let him go. Presto with Pereira's. Patience and his, his breathing right now. He just does not look fatigued at all. Oh, and he stays really calm. And look how relaxed he is defending Simon's power punches. He just slips off, turns his shoulder, slips his head. Sharp eyes. Well, Pereira keeps up like this. You could see him maybe getting a late stoppage over Marcus, who's pouring sweat, 
breathing with his mouth open. He's working hard in there, Joe. Yeah, he's working hard, but he does have that ability to keep this pace for five rounds. We've seen it. Coming off a quick turnaround. A lot of travel to Thailand. Is this peak Simon Marcus? Come on, work out. Let him go, Simon. Some exchange knees on the inside. Well, Simon's done a good job of closing the distance, but is he doing what he needs to do when he gets inside? Well, closing the distance just shuts down Pereira's boxing, which is what he needs to do. That's his defense to the power punching of Pereira. Let him go, let him go. And this way he tries to grind Pereira, try to fatigue him, try to get some knees to the body. Ooh, big overhand right connects for Simon Marcus. You know, maybe Pereira's being a little too pedestrian now. Yeah, he might be a little too patient. No, that last round we saw two judges give it to Simon. Interesting to see how they score that third round. Marcus obviously working harder, but is he working smarter? He's pushing the pace, and maybe to some of those judges, that's what's scoring well. Here's Pereira trying for that front kick. But that Simon threw that overhand, but Pereira it, didn't land. Yeah, it did not land from this angle, it looked like it did, and the crowd made the noise like it did. And that's how Pereira's been defending that right hand. He just turns his left shoulder in front and just lets that punch just go right over his shoulder. Back, back, back. We now enter the championship rounds. We're in the fourth, scheduled for five. It's been a close contest. Let him go, Simon. Simon, let him go. Oh, there's Pereira mixing those knees again, but Simon getting aggressive. Three judges gave round three to Simon Marcus, only two to Pereira. So as of now, it's Pereira up on four judges' guards. Marcus up on one. And it seems like the scoring tonight, the judges are really favoring that forward pressure. You know, Simon's really coming forward. You see him really putting everything he has behind those shots. So Pereira nice. needs to pick it up. Nice body shots and those kicks from Simon Marcus. Straight right hand connects for Pereira. Simon jumping in for a knee, got caught with a right hand. Pereira circling to the left again. Avoid take some power off the left kick. There's that right kick I like from Simon. Still waiting for Pereira just to open up a little bit. Give us a big flurry. He seems to have the energy. And in the first two rounds, he was throwing one, two hooks, one, two uppercuts. We haven't seen that volume style from him in this last few rounds. He seems to be loading up for the one shot. But it could also be because Simon's pressure is shutting down the boxing. And maybe Pereira thinks I'm doing enough damage with these knees on the inside. I don't need to be as active with my hands. Well, that's a dangerous thought process. Yeah. Pereira, twice as many punches have landed, 50 to 23. Let him go. Come on, work out, guys. Work out of that. Work out. See Simon really loading up for that left hand. A lot of knee strikes in the clinch between both of these two. A lot of the fight happening in that range. Pereira with a low kick of his own. Mixed with a high kick to a left hook. A little bit of a combination work there for Pereira as Simon again closes the distance. See a few more of those body kicks from Marcus. That'd be good. Simon, don't grab him. Let him go. Let him go. And Simon even in their out. last fight, Simon was fighting backwards a little bit more. But I think he's hurt. That left kick landed. 
And now Simon Burks oh! goes slow, and he got caught with a left hook. What a five, big bomb! Six, seven, eight. Step forward. Can you continue? Put hey. your hands up. Show me. Show me. Show a me. Game Step changer. Over. Show me. Hey. Don't seconds. think Pereira has that power, but he finds the placement perfectly. Big knee. Simon Mark is still trying to come five, forward, and he makes five, it to the end of the round. Good. And he's been cut open. One of those knees cracked him open. Yeah, that was uh, an impressive combination there from Pereira to get that. Just when we thought Pereira was having a little tough time in the close range in the clinch, he was able to find his hands and knees. Well, it's interesting because Simon had been kind of holding on the inside, and the referee said, quit holding, quit holding. And that's when Marcus Oy. backed up and got caught with that. But look how Pereira slipped that hand to come with that left hook. Beautiful placement, beautiful timing. Simon shelled up, and that was the knee. Followed the left hook, and then that left high kick that came right after. And then Marcus, being the warrior he is, said, you know what, I'm just going to throw my hands a little bit, and then left hook. Yeah, that's one of the great things about Simon's style, and one of his downsides, that he fights really emotional. He's very intense, and we always see that great fight, but sometimes it's smarter just to stay patient, take your breaks, and then come out and go for the attack. Fifth and final round, and Simon Marcus needs a knockdown. If he's going to get it, will most likely come from his kicks. Let's see how he's recovered from that knockdown. Over the high kick there, now he's backing up. Pereira needs to be careful too, because Simon's dangerous. I, I expect Simon to throw some big power punches. of his own, but man, those knees from Pereira just seem to be doing that, most of that damage in those exchanges in that fourth round. So Pereira coming on strong late. Simon Marcus, though, still has two minutes to change to try and do something special here tonight. This is a world title fight. You pull out all the stops. But even if you look at Pereira, it looks like he did. He was in the first round. Very calm face, not much emotion. Doesn't even look to be breathing heavily. When you've got hands like Pereira, you're just begging Simon Marcus to throw some power punches at you because then you can counter him. Yeah, because when Simon power punches, you see how he opens his chin and he kind of leads with his, with his face where he needs to kind of keep his chin down and, and stay a little bit more technical. But at this point of the game, you gotta, you gotta go for the knockout. So Simon's got a good, solid right hand. Another knee right through the guard. Pereira continues to walk forward now. Caught him with a left hook coming in. Pereira looking for his fifth consecutive win, his third title defense. He's trying to beat former middleweight champion Simon Marcus for the second time. Poetan said he fights because he wants to motivate children in Brazil to be the best they can be to rise up out of poverty. He grew up extremely poor, grew up on the streets, was an alcoholic as a teenager. He's turned his life around and wants to be the hero to many Brazilian youth right now. Simon Marcus coming forward. He knows he needs a knockout. Boy. Pereira, man, he's, he's looking impressive. The fact that he can control the pace from first to five like he did. Not many fighters have hearts as big as Simon Marcus. No. He definitely has that warrior spirit. spirit. And he's going to slug it out to the bell, hoping to get, get lucky and land a big bomb. Yeah, he's going to go out on his shield if he has to. And that will do it. Alex Pereira seems to have done enough, including a huge knockdown in round number four. Yeah, very impressive fight. Great action from both gentlemen, but Alex Pereira's boxing seemed to be on sharp, especially with those knees. The official decision.
from the Sears Center in Chicago. When we return, you're watching Glory 58. We welcome you back to the Sears Center here in Chicago, Illinois. Our main event just wrapping up between Alex Pereira and Simon Marcus. And when you think back to how you thought this fight was going to play out compared to how it actually did pan out, what are your thoughts? Well, I thought Pereira did the strategy, which I thought he was going to do, really stay calm and patient with his boxing. But I saw Simon with a little bit of difference. He came in a little bit more aggressive, started pushing the pace a little bit more than he did in the last fight. So the forward pressure of Simon kind of uh, pushed the pace a little differently, but good work in the clinch from both guys. Let's look at our highlights from our main event tonight, middleweight championship of the world. We start in round two, Joe. Yeah, good boxing versus that good pressure. And a lot of the fight happened in the clinch. And, and both guys wanted to avoid the power shots by staying in there and going back and forth with the knees. You know, Simon Marcus likes that with his Muay Thai background. But you see Pereira staying really patient, trying to mix in his front kicks. And he knew Simon was going to come aggressive with his hands. And he was just able to slip off these punches and not really take the full force behind those. But what really impressed me with Pereira was his ability to mix his knees with his punches. He stays calm defensively, used his clinch, and then was able to find these knees, which split Simon open in the fourth round and got that knockdown with a nice left hook. As Simon got aggressive coming forward, Pereira was able to find knees and hooks versus that forward pressure. Simon survived the round, put it into a fifth round where he knew he needed to get that win, so he kind of pushed forward, and Pereira landed still with those good hands, right hand, left uppercut, followed with his vicious knees to the head and body. Final punch statistics, let's take a look at him. Alex Pereira, much more precise for sure. 74 punches landed. 130 total out of 189 thrown, 94 for 173 for Simon Marcus. Looking at the strikes by Zonas, Pereira really using his boxing to, to attack the head of Simon, using straight punches, good hooks, and uppercuts, where Simon Marcus really invested early on in the fight with his low kicks. Let's send it into the ring now for the decision in Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's take a look at the totals. Two of our judges score them out, 48-46. Two have it, 49-45. And our fifth and final judge scores the bout, 50-44. It is a unanimous decision. All for your winner. And still, glory middleweight champion of the world, Let's get in here with the champion, Alex Pereira. Congratulations on your victory. In your opinion, what was the difference tonight that led you to victory? Uh, in my opinion, it was my vontade, the vontade to win. It's always bigger. This me motivates me a lot. I'm a very hard guy, Simon Marcos, but I'm very well prepared. I'm prepared very well for this fight. What makes always a difference is my will, my heart of a champion. You know, no matter what adversity I face in the ring, I always overcome because I'm a champion. I respect Simon Marcos a lot. You know, he's a great fighter, but what always makes the difference because I'll never give up in this ring. You were very patient in this fight. What led to the knockdown in round four? É, eu já lutei uma vez com, com o Simon Marcos. É, eu sabia de alguns defeitos dele. Trabalhei em cima disso. Eu tinha que manter a calma, manter a calma e saberia a hora certa de tentar nocautear. Quase consegui, é, mas como eu tinha falado nas entrevistas, se eu não ganhar por nocaute, ganhar bem por pontos. So, as I fought Simon Marcos before, I could see that he has some mistakes on his game. So, our strategy was to stay patient, stay calm. Looking for the knockout when it comes, but if it doesn't, like he said before, win on a minute, there will leave no doubt in his ring. You seem to get better each and every fight. You look almost unstoppable right now. If you could pick your next opponent, who do you want to fight next? É, eu tinha falado Jason Williams, né? Mas perdeu pro Simon. É, agora também encontrei ele várias vezes no, no hotel. É, quase que viram amigos, vamos dizer assim, né? 
mas eu queria talvez uma experiência nova, é, lutar na categoria de cima em Nova York. É, lá eu fui muito bem recebido, deixei uma, uma marca bem registrada lá, talvez aí uma, uma super luta é, entre dois campeões aí. So, I said before that would like to fight Jason Williams, but since he lost and this whole week getting together in the hotel, they almost like became friends and he always, you know, he's the kind of guy who always looking for the toughest challenges. And for him now, he really like to make a super fight going up to the 12 fight division and fight Marty in New York in November. That'd be fantastic. Hey, I know you don't like to smile much. Can you give us one after you've defended your title for the third time? There he is, a smile from the champ. Give it up one more time for your middleweight champion of the world, Alex Pereira. There you go, Alex Pereira defending the title for the third time, and we finally got a smile out of him with that impressive victory over Simon Marcus for the second time. He looked good, he looked patient, he got that knockdown he was telling us with, and it was all with that patience as Simon Marcus was coming in.